this program, the power of God, the grace of God will uh, release you for exploit in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. you. May be seated. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to a joyous occasion. Congratulations, Light Class. Please clap for yourselves. You are looking splendid. The times we are in, it's not a coincidence that this is the Light Class. If you're seated here, I promise you that you're witnessing the commissioning of people that God has his hands upon and the exploits he has for them even they have not seen before now. We are so grateful to God for how he has seen them through these last two years, for the persistence in the midst of all kinds of challenges, but God saw them through and they finished. I welcome you to the graduation of the light class. I ask that you sit back. God has something in store for you. Everything that they will, they will partake of, we ourselves will also be partakers. Welcome and be blessed. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Next, we have the valedictory speech by the class captain of the light class, Pastor Collins Eberinga. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said, Praise the Lord. So the General Coordinator of Eternity Ministries, Dr. Penda Dweke, board members here present, our keynote speaker for today, our dear brother Mark Kolo, the National Coordinator of Eternity Ministries in Nigeria, Mr. Nia Labi, the Training Coordinator Truth Institute, our dear sister who just welcomed us, Mrs. Sinde Naweke, the Registrar of Truth Institute, Mr. Shaka Ibrahim, all members of Truth Institute faculty here present, my beloved brothers and sisters in the light class, special guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to stand before you on behalf of the light class to express our appreciation to the almighty God who made today possible after two years of intensive, demanding, but absolutely rewarding training at the School of Divine Priorities. We started this journey in 2022 with more than 25 members in our class. Actually, 40 were admitted uh, just over 25 resume for classes. But today, only about 18 of us are graduating uh, simply by the message of God. Unfortunately, in the course of our training, one of us, our dear brother Richard, left for eternity. And today we remember him and his family and we trust that the Almighty God will continue to uphold them. But you know, his departure was a shock to all of us as a class and the ministry as a whole. But also, it reinforced one of the key messages of the School of Divine Priorities, the brevity of life and our lack of control of it. We pray the Almighty God will continue to comfort and uphold his family. We're also privileged to have two of our class members, you know, we had got two marriages in the course of our training, uh, Sister Joyce, who is sitting there, got married while we were in class, <laughs> and uh, Brother King got married as well. And we welcomed our first baby, a light class baby, born to their two mates. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Our training at the School of the Apprentice of Truth issue was comprehensive, it was transforming, it was correct and current. It is a most needed and necessary experience for equipping anyone who wants to live for God and his purposes on this side of eternity. There were Approaching six, about five modules, and I'm just saying this for purpose of emphasis. In session one, we went through the truth cycle, divine priority, school of life, eternity, section, session two, school of disciples, school of grace, school of evangelism and mission, Bible service and church history, session three, school of divine revelation, the God course, school of prayer and intercession, session four, school of divine protocols, marriage as God intended. Session 5, School of Life and Ministry, School of Evangelism and Missions, School of Prayer and Intercession. Of course, Session 6, School of Practical Ministry, School of, you know, School of Grace and the Temperature of the Soul. 
each session and the modules were presented by a faculty living out in their own daily lives the realities of the truth that they were teaching. The audiovisuals, movies and documentaries were appropriate and contributed immensely to deepening the truth we were taught in class. And I'm sure those of us in the math class and the new class will acknowledge that those audiovisuals were correct. They were timely. And they significantly you know, brought home the messages that were taught in class. We had class assignments, books to read, a lot of them, practical actions, life cycle and that's of group activities to foster engagement with the truth we were taught in class and to build in Dr. Ferdinand's words, a community of common convictions, living for the king and his priorities here on earth in the light of eternity. The discipline in the class was interesting. Don't sit near the wall. Just move away from the wall. No excuses. Get it the first time. Can anybody, can anybody remember that? But, you know, these were simple strategies that were aimed at raising leaders because leaders must have some disciplines and some protocols to live by. No phones while in class. Amen. So we had an atmosphere that allowed us to engage truth. Classes were not just lectures, but periods of Engagement with the living word, and on many occasions, the tangible presence of God and his power was present and evident in the class. In the course of our training, we were privileged to organize an outreach to the Ghana Ghana community at the outskirts of Abuja. We conducted a medical and evangelical mission to this community. Besides the general medical treatment, we had an optician with her team, and free reading classes were distributed to the people alongside other items. So, we are one to the glory of God. As part of our training, we also were required to conduct special leadership seminars which held in Abuja, Lagos, and Gombe to engage and share the truth we have encountered in the course of our training. So deep is not a program. It's an experience. Anyone who desires to live for the king and his priorities in these last days need to, you know, go through. To stay strong, we stand the onslaught of hell in these last days and advance the purpose of our Heavenly Father, pleasing him on this side of eternity, while living moment by moment in the light of eternity. As we concluded our training, we were privileged to be hosted for a dinner in the home of the general coordinator of eternal ministries, Dr. Fenda Nweke, and his dear wife, Mrs. Nde Nweke. We watched a very interesting movie, Secretariat. And we had a powerful, wonderful time of friendship. I still remember the spontaneous outburst of praise and worship and the song that came out of that fellowship. He do it. He do it. He dwell it. The Lord God reign it. That song came spontaneously out of that fellowship time. And we had a wonderful time of fellowship with uh, Dr. Ferdinand and his family. That meant we had access. But it also reinforced the privilege of access that we have to our Heavenly Father who is willing and open to release all his treasures to us if we will only dare to take advantage of the privilege of access to the King of Glory that we have been granted in Christ Jesus. I want to celebrate every member of the large class who made it to this graduation and commissioning phase of our training, and also those who, for circumstances beyond their control, did not finish the training with us or are still in the training with the ongoing sessions. Special thanks to the leadership team of Light Class, Pastor Tosin Odubote. Pastor Tosin, please, can you just, you know, the assistant governor of the class, Sister Choma Chikwe, our admin and financial secretary and treasurer, ably assisted by Brother Femi, Pastor Adeboy, Adedeji, our outreach director. Sister Debanke Adewara and Sister Gwemi, our welfare coordinators. Brother Austin Obayagbana, our prayer coordinator. So group leaders, and indeed all members of the light class, for their unflinching support as we navigated through the sessions in the course of our training. As we come to the end of our formal training, we have a responsibility before us. And that responsibility is the duty to live out the truth we have been impacted with and to multiply it across the nations and marketplace platforms where we are located. Is a duty we owe to ourselves, eternity ministries, and most importantly to the Almighty God 
for the privilege he has accorded us to go to this training. By the mercies and graces of the Almighty God, we will carry this light in collaboration with eternity ministers to multiply this truth across the body of Christ, irrespective of denominational lilies, until the whole world is filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea and Calvary is fully maximized. Finally, as the Ferdinand will always say, Jesus is entitled to receive all that he paid for at Calvary. We trust God for grace to be part of that community of God's kingdom citizens who will make that happen until the King of Glory himself returns in glory for the prize, P-R-I-Z-E, for which he paid the supreme prize, P-R-I-C-E, at Calvary. To God be all the glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you very much for that wonderful speech that captured practically everything. <laughs> we would take testimonies now from some members of the light class. Um, we would have, in this order, we we'll have Pastor Tosin Odusote of First Square Gospel Church. After him, we'd have Sister Choma, and then we'd have Pastor Moses. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Our God is good. Two years back, um, I was approached to come for this program. And already, I was in a program for my master's in our school of theology. So I was wondering, uh, let me just finish that one, then I will come. But the elder who was on my neck, Elder Mofuma, was just pushing me, but you, you can combine it, you can make it. Just to give in to his pressure, okay, I feel the form. But also I was thinking that sincerely, I've been a Christian for a while. Early 80s, I was in Unifair, We've been to all the conferences. I've had men of God. As I was wondering, <laughs> but did not tell him that one. <laughs> just tell him that. Uh, just allow me to finish the, uh, my course. But sincerely, when I came, my eyes were open to the truths I've not engaged before. And I thank God for that. As a minister, also, I've been uh, in my organization, and it's, um, one of the leaders. And as a minister, what I've learned in so deep, deliberately um, putting it into what we do as a church. And I believe God that um, ministry has changed because what doctrine makes a man, I found out, doctrine is the most important thing a minister should be involved in. Because all you do, all you say, are your reason, is all affected by your doctrine. Am I right? So, so deep has done that for me. Changed my doctrine, changed my aspect of ministry, my looking life. Sir, I can't thank you enough for all you have done. And all the people that imparted us, we are grateful. Praise you, the Lord. Is that Choma Chuku? Yeah. So, so I I know a little bit about so deep, um, but I didn't know I didn't know I didn't know it would affect me the way it did. I think God set me up. <laughs> so um so deep, like I said, I've said in my, when I wrote so deep is not just a training, an opportunity to align to God and encounter God. It's where you come and you drop what you know and be ready to listen to God and know what he has for you. From session one to session, session six, there was something God had for anybody that was willing or ready to listen. Um, I had questions. I came at a time when 
I was struggling with several questions. And some of the questions were not just um, career, not career uh, but also questions about the home. Um, as, a, as a young believer, and not unmarried, I was very, vi very, very vibrant. And I had some, I have convictions and several things. But when certain things started happening in life, I started having a lot of questions. Those questions were answered. And so the, many of those questions were answered. Many of those questions are still being answered. So, so this is the place where when you come prepared with the heart of God, um, willing to hear God, your questions will be answered. And sometimes even your perceptions about things, the place where you unlearn and relearn, praise the Lord. Um, the, the teachings were scriptural. They were not just teachings because they want to teach you. They were biblical teachings. So they were transforming. Praise the Lord. And you, you need to... You needed to, um, uh, you, you needed to just come. That's, that's the word. Let, let me give you an example. One of the days, because at some point, I, I, I wouldn't, just for me to just grab what is happening, I wouldn't eat. I remember one of the days that I had, I had in my spirit, don't eat. So during the afternoon, I said, Kai, I cannot stay too long. Let me go and eat. When I stepped out, one brother, he didn't know what he was doing. He came and met me. He said, you're not supposed to be eating. He didn't know he was talking by the spirit. He didn't know after that day, I didn't eat again. And what God did after during that so deep session was amazing. And at that time, I was coming into Abuja, and I saw the poster of the, the person that was president. And I threw away my face because I was annoyed. And the Lord asked me a question. Imagine if this person was reached out to when he was, that was before season five, when he was a child, and he's a believer. As I entered session five, what blew my mind the most, one of the things that blew my mind the most was missions. And how important it was. And how, when it's not done, the kind of things that comes out of it. So for every session, God was setting me up. Now, I'm trying to say this because if you don't, don't just come to session, um, so they come, come with a heart ready to, uh, to, to learn. And I want to thank the faculty. Dr. Fedna, God bless you, sir. The, the, the teachings were, they were, they were in debt. You could know that it was coming from it was not coming from just anywhere. It was coming from scripture. It was born. The spirit bettered them. The points. And I, don't, I don't know how to say that. As, I, as, we, as we walked in and we were doing the worship and, and the ministers the were singing, you got times and seasons in your hands. So deep time for me was a season. It was a, it was a ripe season for me to hear the things I needed to hear. Because I was getting distracted. I was actually getting distracted with certain things in my life. And God had to draw me back to know to so align to what was necessary and to, to put, my, put my feet down. Then the, the assignments. The assignment was a blessing. I was tempted to give assignment out to someone to help me one time, but I had, do, do it yourself so that you will learn. One of the most blessed assignments was the indwelling. I still, I didn't, I didn't read the book the way I wanted to, but I had to rush to finish, but I'm still going back. I had to, sometimes I had to um, so read some, I'll record it in my phone. And put it on my ears. So I will hear it. So I will hear it again. I just want to just, just hear it again. The things I heard from the faculty, things like um, uh, MIC. I, I, have never to, I have never thought about MIC in my life as a believer. It was, it was mind blowing. The cause of our faith. Uh, sorry, I'm, 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 the, the thing is plenty. Praise the Lord. And for, for me, if I start thinking about them, when I, I start begging God, please let this, I, want, I, want, I don't want to forget them. So I, that's why I'm, I'm crazy about getting the recordings. Praise the Lord. I take it so seriously. So I, um, I want to thank, thank the Lord for even my classmates. Do you know even the contributions my classmates give? They're a blessing to me. Hallelujah. So uh, I want to thank God for the faculty. I want to thank God for Truth Institute. It, let me see. You may look and see what you are doing is small, it's big. It is big. My prayer is that it will become great, like the doctor said today. It will multiply. Praise the Lord. I want to be part of it that will multiply it. And, uh, and my prayer is that it is not small. It, what is this? it can drown the world. It can burn the world. It's a fire that can become a wildfire. And I pray all of us will be part of it in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Pastor Moses Odo. Praise the Lord. 
Okay, my, my study um, experience for me, I want to just um, title it with the two words on the introduction, which is, um, is uh, transformative for me and implementary. And it begins like this. I read so deep um, when I'm about leaving um, school. And my prayer is that I knew years ago I have a direction that God will want me to advance his kingdom or to contribute in his kingdom. So I've been praying. I said, oh, God, I need a place that I needed to learn. So all those years he asked me to just wait. That I, need, I said I need a place to learn. So while I was praying, I remember it was when uh, they were having SLS um, class in uh, Nasrallah State, precisely, Nasrallah State University. So I attended. That was during the COVID. That's why I said I really thank God for the COVID because I felt the COVID was for me, basically. And then I attended uh, the class at that time. And I was so challenged with the teachings. And so such impact on me that I said, okay, they, 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 they keep advertising so deep there. I said, okay, I, must, I want to attend the so deep itself. And I remember I even applied. There was no feedback. So I told myself that, in fact, I went online, make my research, but I told myself that I will pack my things and I will go to the venue. Let me see if they will drive me out. Sincerely from my heart, that was what I said. And then, likewise, even when I got there, I didn't even get my number, but somehow I started it. Sincerely, why is the word transformative was at that time, I was actually, I'm actually a volunteer then at an orphanage home named Blessed Touch. I felt like affected these children, you know, there's a lot of, I wanted, in terms of remuneration and salary, I wanted a high salary if it will, but I was just a free volunteer. But during the course of so deep, and I learned that it was a privilege to invest in the life of these young ones, especially God's word. That was, I began to saw, we saw uh, the, the protocol of the king. I said, it's a privilege, if possible, giving my life to it. You know, I remember one of the write-up I saw on the wall entering, and that write-up was, if you've not found anything to live for, then you've not started living paraphrasing. That was, I think, Matthew Luther Jr. that made, made that, um, sorry, that statement. I was so thrilled, and I went home. I was deliberate, helping the children, teaching them God's word, and they were changing. Then for me, it shaped my mindset, and there was this consciousness that I have about eternity. So strong that, in fact, everybody around me, the first person I was thinking was my parents because they were just the nominal, traditional Christian. I said, ah, you mean my parents will end without, there's no future for them? I went back, you know, familiarity. I felt so much to interact with them, but I had to. I had to tell them about eternity. And they were greatly blessed and picking up. And at every moment, I begin to give them that word for them. Then also, another thing that happened to me, I noticed that they going around, somehow, even uh, some widows reaching out to people, and the question was that they need to hear that there's a life after death. And sincerely, some, uh, uh, there are testimony where some of them really appreciate God for that. And then, so the aspect of implementary was, I noticed I was about living, and then I needed, you know, with the condition of Nigeria. But I noticed from so deep, there was a challenge which a book, which is uh, the bigger God gets in your eyes, the tinier your mountain seems. And I saw that the whole world put together, there's nothing for me to be scared of. And there was this boldness I received to face and then go into the world and uh, begin to affect it, which it resulted in even some outreach, outreach uh, in the West uh, and then even around um, in Kaduna there precisely. And then another thing that happened to me in so deep was at one contact, I had a challenge with my eyesight. I never shared it with, anybody, with everybody. This light, the brightness of this light, there was no way I could see it. I would just be bringing my head down. I said, I would never go to the hospital. And that was this MIC. I said, this will work for me. And then even in dwelling, I said, when I read through the indwelling, I said, is this thing true? I said, yes, it's true. So I sat and I was listening. At that time, Dr. Fedna was sharing. And I said, instantly, somehow, during, sorry, the process of sharing, there was, I just noticed that I could, just as I'm looking at this light right now, I noticed that there was no any, the symptom I, I was feeling. So I was healed completely during the course of that um, class. And my own uh, thoughts, again, lastly, as I summarize, is at times I feel like staying back in, so, in this section. I don't want to go out again. I feel like leaving. I want to go and meet a lot of things out there. But for me, I want to believe that Calvary indeed will be maximized over my life. And I want to thank you so much for the whole faculty. Thank you for the impact. And I encourage everyone. Right now, I'm sure that my parents are streaming because I had to send it. They wanted to be part of it, but they are streaming. And I want to thank you so much, all the faculty, for all the blessing. 
and we will continue advancing God's kingdom in every place we find ourselves. Thank you so much. Okay. Pastor Adibayo Adidich. Praise the Lord. Uh, I deliberately did not prepare for this because uh, I'm defaulting in some areas. And sir, I can promise you that each of my assignments that is left, <laughs> they shall be done, they shall be completed. When, I think yesterday, uh, is it, I don't know where it's prophet me, he said, uh, we are graduating tomorrow. Are you, are you sure that I will graduate? I said, well, whatever it takes, it's better let me fall into the hand of Sodip. It's better to be here. You know, out of, it's actually better. It's sweet to actually be here. Let me, I don't want to f fall into every other, you know, what the course is all about. You know that others have shared. I want to say here categorically that I came into so deep accidentally. Like my sister was saying, set up. I think there was a divine hand that just, you know, manipulated me into so deep. And thank God for one of the faculty that is also here. It was at the thick of a crisis in my office. The, 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 you just come to the office at my level, nothing doing. For whatever reason. From morning till evening, day in, day out. At a time, I pick up quarrel with my director. October 5, October 6, 2021, I actually wrote him, not just, I put it black and white. This is not done. This is not. This is not the way life should be. And for coming up to that level of challenge, in fact, he actually closed all the doors. It's okay. So, most of the time, if I like, I go to the office. If I don't, I just... Then, so deep came in, and my perception was shifted a little. And I began to understand that, from so deep, that actually challenge those are part of the things that i'm also able to glean that embedded in your challenge is your destiny the whole of the reason for your existence is wrapped your your challenges are wrapped because on coming out to so deep believing that i was just trying to you know just wipe away time. Then God began to open me up. I'm from one of the faculty here. In fact, in one of the days I was in his house, I'm not talking less than Pastor Akinola. We had a vigil. As I speak to the glory of God, that problem is over. The various interactions that we have. And it helped me to actually appreciate God better. In the sense that when, you're, when you have problems, when you have challenges, hone it. Hone your challenges. It's designed for you. Every problem that your man passes through is, is customized for you. It's a bait to draw you more into God's presence. To be able to know what he has in store for you. And that's exactly what so deep means to me today. Because I know that whatever I do now from here, it has redefined my value for life. It has redefined my understanding of what relationship, both within and outside the Christendom, is all about. It has redefined ministry. In fact, at the time, I think I told my senior pastor, Evangelist Michelle Lisa, after the meeting 
after I had had some sessions. And I asked him, I said, sir, did you actually pass through so deep? And I told him, it's not normal to be normal after passing through so deep. To be normal, then something is something must. Because it seems a little bit still calm. But people around me, they just saw that there is a fire that is burning in this guy that they really cannot understand. And I think those fires were the ones that brought people like General Chinoko and his wife into this meeting. Those were the things that brought also my wife here. Because I see reasons why, you know, I actually invited many. These were just a few that were able eventually to make it. And I know the gospel according to Zodip, Zodip still continues in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to appreciate the coordinator. I want to appreciate all the faculties for the investment that you have done in our lives. We pray that those investments, they will be uh, here with us till eternity in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you and thank you and thank you so much. Amen. Okay. Now we'll have a special presentation by the graduating class. Praise the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 53, scripture says that the Lord carried the iniquities of us all. So we'll be doing a special number and then collectively taking a worship together. And the song says, if he carry the weight of the world upon his shoulder, he will carry you. I don't know what you're dealing with. Tony Cornet talked about there has never been a time like this when there's so much to worry about. But we'll bring you an encouragement this evening. The one who carried the weight of our sins on Calvary, he will carry you. No problems to be, God cannot solve it. There is no mountains to talk, He cannot move it. There is no storm so dark, God cannot calm it. There is no sorrows to deep he cannot see me if he carry the way of the world upon his shoulders I know my brother that he will carry you if he carry the way Upon his shoulder, I know my brother that he will carry you. There is no problem too big, God cannot solve it. There is no mountain too tall, he cannot move it. There is no storm so dark, God cannot soon it. Yeah. There is no sorrows too deep, He cannot soon it. If He carry the weight of the world upon His shoulder, I know my brother that He carry you he may carry the weight of the world upon his shoulder I know my sister 
God on here will carry you. He says, Come unto me, all who are weary and I will give you rest. So if he carries the weight of the world upon his shoulder, I know my brother that he will carry you. If he carries the weight of the world upon his shoulder, I know my sister that he will carry you. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father of glory. Bless, very bless. Set our hearts on fire. Glory, my glory. Nations, we grace and mercy send from your word, Lord, and let there be light. Shine, Jesus, shine. Oh, we the Father's glory, bless, very bless, set our hearts up. River flow, flow, river flow, flood our nations with grace and mercy. Send from your word, Lord, and let help be Oh, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness, shining. Jesus, light of the world. Shine upon us, set us free with the truths you now bring us. Shine on me and shine on me. Yeah, shine, Jesus, shine. Feel this place with the Father of glory.
with faculty. Uh, so the light class, please come forward. And we'll have the faculty. We could have some seats here, please. So we'll, we'll, we'll in front here. We'll have some seats here, please. Also, the faculty, please join join in the photograph. Doctor Mommy Tutu. Yes, please also the Pastor Ni Yalabi. Also the faculty, please join in the photograph. Praise the Lord. Amen. So at this point, we'll take the keynote address for uh, this event. And our keynote speaker is Brother Mark Polo. Brother Mark Polo is the team lead of Global Activation. Global Activation is a ministry that is laden with the responsibility of mobilizing disciples to engage the harvest in the front lines where the need is greatest among people who have never heard the gospel before and 
They are doing great work in different areas where the gospel is yet to go to. So we have Brother Mark Polo bringing us the keynote address this evening. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Jesus is worthy of praise. Light class, congratulations. And uh, I like the song that they sang, the songs that they sang, because God is able to carry us through this season and every season in Jesus' name. I said God is able to carry us through this season and every season of life in Jesus' name. But you know, they also sang that there should be light, that God will shine the light of the gospel all across the land, and that the Spirit will shine, and the river would flow, and the word will be sent forth. These are the priorities in the heart of God. God would not give his only son for something that he did not deeply care about. And his desire is that you and I will become very involved in the things that he is deeply, deeply concerned about. So I just want to thank God for the ministry of the light class to us in songs just a few minutes ago. I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for this privilege to just share some thoughts with us as a keynote address in this graduating or commissioning event. And I also want to thank Dr. Ferdinand Mweke, whom the Lord has used to bring forth this vision and this school that has been a blessing to many, many of us. I remember when I came to Sodip, when he challenged me to come to Sodip, uh, in the year 2015, I didn't feel like I needed it. That's like what somebody said, Pastor Tosin said. I, I've been in ministry for 16 years at the time, and I thought, okay, I've done numerous trainings, but I felt maybe, maybe not. But it so happened that the following year, I was taking a sabbatical. I was taking a sabbatical of ministry. I was in transition, and I felt, okay, let me take some time to equip myself. Maybe this may help me. So I enrolled for Sodip. And today I can stand here with every confidence to say that I can divide my ministry life over the last 25 years to pre-Sodip and post-Sodip. Because what you thought you knew is often redefined when you come under the gaze of God's word in its simplicity and purity, but with power and conviction presented. Many of my perspectives, many of my persuasions were redefined. And I just thank God for that experience. I can say with, again, clarity that the things that the Lord has enabled me to begin to do after so deep have had greater understanding and clarity because of the truth that enabled one to make certain adjustments. I want to thank him and thank all the faculty that the Lord has used, past and present, to continue to sharpen us. I want to thank all the well-wishers, acknowledging all those who have come to, you know, celebrate with our brothers and sisters this evening on this very important occasion. Briefly, I want to share with us on the importance of equipping so that the child of God does not exist in a time when he or she ought to be sharpened for a reason but remains a blunt instrument. And it is no longer news. By now, many of us are aware that Africa is currently the continent with the highest population of Christians. I thought you would be excited about that. I'm always excited when I hear that. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. 
In 2018, Africa became the continent with the highest number of Christians, evangelical and otherwise. And the closest continent next to it, which is Latin America, is still like 80 million in number behind. So God has done an amazing work in Africa, especially in the last 100 years. A hundred years ago, total number of Christians all over Africa, about 10 million. Today, we are almost 700 million. In just a hundred years. Tell me who else could have done that if not for God. Are you following what I'm saying? God is at work in Africa in unprecedented ways. The numbers are staggering. The numbers are humongous. When you hear about in many parts of Africa, countries where 60, 70 years ago, you would look very hard to find a Christian. Today, we see churches blowing up in many of those countries. So we celebrate what God has done in this astonishing and astronomical growth that he has given our continent. But it is for a reason. It is for a reason. When you read Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 14, God gave his strategy for how he is going to bring down Babylon. God said, I will fill you with men. That is a divine strategy. When God wants to do something, he creates a type of people that will do something about the situation he wants to change in that place. Did you hear what I said? It's a divine strategy because on earth, God does not work without people. But God looks for correct people who can carry out his agenda. So Babylon was there, greatest empire of the time, and God said, I am bringing you down. And how I am going to do that is that I will fill you with people who will raise a shout against you. You see, if the people are not many, when they shout, their shout may not be loud enough. They may not be heard. So God said, I will fill you with people who will raise a shout against you. God is looking for people in and from Africa that will raise a shout against the Babylonian system of this world. So God is filling Africa. He is populating the continent with people who bear his image. The church in Africa is growing in unprecedented ways. Africa remains one of the few people on places on earth where on a given Sunday morning, the churches are full. In most parts of the world, there are buildings but no people. The church in Africa is bursting at the seams. The numbers are staggering. And we give praise and we give thanks to God for that. God is filling Africa because he is raising a people who will raise a shout against the system of this world. I need that point to sink in. That it is not just numbers for numbers sake. I, I track with mission statistics and church growth statistics from time to time. And I can tell you that these numbers are growing. The numbers are there. And they are exciting when you hear about what God is doing numerically. But these numbers are just not for just to get us excited. It's important that we realize that God does not only work with numbers. You remember what Jonathan said to his armor bearer? He said, God is able to save whether with plenty or with few. And in fact, when you read the scriptures, you will see many examples of how God led a few people out to battle against a huge number of people, and those few people came out victorious. I did a study years ago about the battles in scripture, and I found that honestly, many of the battles in scripture, they were not fought by men, they were fought by God. Do you remember Abraham's 318 servants? How do you take 318 people to go to war against four powerful kings who have just defeated other empires? You don't do that unless you're on a suicide mission. But they came back victorious. 
What about Gideon's 300? They went to war against the Midianites, over a hundred thousand strong, 300 people, and they defeated them. The princes of Midian were brought down to their knees, and the kings of Midian were defeated and decapitated. 300 men. Who fought that battle, if not God? Do you remember Joshua and the battle against the Amorite kings? Five kings of the Amorites in Joshua chapter 10 came against the Gibeonites. Scripture says that Joshua marched all night in defense of the Gibeonites and they fought them. And it was in that chapter that Joshua prayed and then the sun stood still and the moon. Actually, it was the earth that stopped rotating. I was thinking about that this morning. I had to ask my wife. I said, actually, what happened is not that the sun stood still and the moon stood still. The earth stopped rotating. Are you following? Because the sun does not rise and it does not set. Are we together? It's the earth that rotates and revolves. Can you imagine the whole planet came to a standstill because of something God was doing? The earth stopped rotating because this battle must be brought to a conclusion. That's what God can do for his purpose when he finds a people who are rightly aligned and are pursuing his agenda. The earth does not, rot does not stop rotating for just anybody. Pray all you like. Fast until your belly touches your back. Nothing will happen. But when God finds a people that are in alignment with his agenda... They can make declarations and prayers that God will honor because they are in agreement with his present agenda. So there are many other examples of how a few people fought against a large number of people and came out victorious. There's always advantage in numbers only when it is the right kind of people because you can also lead a multitude of people that are not in agreement with the divine will of God. Nothing will happen. In other words, you can be leading a mega church of 50,000 people and they can't contribute anything to the purposes of God. But you can be leading a small band of people that are in agreement with God and then God will move on their behalf. What does 2 Chronicles 16.9 say? It says, The eye of the Lord runs to and fro the whole earth, Looking for who? Is it numbers? No. Those whose hearts are what? Loyal to him. So that what? He may show himself strong on their behalf. So there's a type of people that God is looking for. Not just everybody. We can celebrate the numbers. Oh, we have the largest church auditorium in the world. We praise God for that. We have entered Guinness Book. But listen, God does not depend on our numbers. We can thank God that we are still the country that is known to have assembled the largest number of people that gathered for a prayer meeting anywhere in history. We thank God for that, but God is not dependent on our numbers. We can be known as the country that has more churches than Christians in the world, but God is not dependent on the number of our churches. God is looking for a certain type of person or people that he can show himself strong on their behalf. It's important for us to lay this foundation because the truth about it is that God wants people that are prepared. What did John say? The Bible says that he is a voice in the wilderness. What was he crying? To make ready a people for the Lord. So people need to be made ready. So when I see all these statistics and these numbers of the church in Africa, I'm excited at the numbers. But honestly, the question I ask myself often is, how will they be made ready for the Lord? There is a type of leader that needs to emerge right now that the Lord can use to make people ready for his purposes. And that is what the School of Divine Priorities is focused on doing. Raising such leaders. Whether in the church or in the marketplace, anybody that has some measure of influence God is seeking a type of instrument that he can use to position his people made ready for the things he wants to do. 
So let me just mention a few thoughts and then we'll look at one scripture before we close this keynote address. So beyond counting our numbers, we must make our numbers count by translating this vast army into a fighting force for the battles of the Lord in this Kairos season that has come to Africa. We thank God for the numbers, but we translate those numbers into usable material. Not everybody that calls upon the name of the Lord is usable. I wish they were. If they were, then Gideon's 30,000 soldiers would have gone to battle. But God says, no, I can't use these guys. And it's sort of painful to realize that there are many people in our churches that the Lord cannot use because they have not been made ready. They may even want to be used, but it takes a certain type of sharpening before you can take certain instruments, tools, or weapons to war. You can't take a blunt arrow and shoot it and expect to get any results. Is that correct? So you need sharpening. So beyond counting our numbers, we need to make our numbers count. An army that is armed but not properly motivated will still turn back in the day of battle as the children of Ephraim did in Psalm 78. The Bible says that though they were armed for battle, yet they turned back. In the day of battle, they turned back. Leaders are responsible for making human capital productive. If you have capital, but it is not ch channeled aright, then your capital is useless. So I'm speaking to the light class as leaders who have been trained. You are responsible now to make the human capital at your disposal productive for the one who owns them. Can I get one amen? You are responsible. I am responsible for making human capital productive. We must turn followers into warriors who then become leaders in their own right. For example, David's mighty men. How did they come to David? Confused, indebted, outcasts, dejected. But before long, we see them being labeled as the mighty men of David. That is effective leadership. David trained them. David passed them through a process of development until they could do what David could do, and some of them even better than what David could do. You know, one of the banes of leadership of uh, leadership we have in Africa, many parts of the world as well, is that an insecure leader will be afraid of raising people who will surpass him. When in reality, that is the responsibility of leadership. To raise people that can do better than you. Are we together? So I charge you, as members of the light class, this training you have had is not for you alone. I'm excited to hear that you've had SLS in Lagos, you know, in Gombe, a few other places. But honestly, we need to take it beyond now to find who is it that we can raise that can surpass us. Somebody said genuine disciple making is a father crying out for his sons to overtake him, not to stay behind him. A few years ago, the Lord spoke to me. He said, you see all these people have given you. They are not followers. They are leaders in the making. They are not followers. They are not to be following you. You have to be raising them to lead others. Fear gripped me. Because I said, then who is sufficient unto this? How do you raise leaders that should surpass you? The Lord said, I will help you. And he is indeed helping me in Jesus' name. So, Africa stands at the threshold of maximizing the huge harvest that has come in and then translating that into a massive harvest force for global impact. Once upon a time, we are the minority in the Christian world. But through the sacrifice of others who came, Africa is no longer the receiving continent of the gospel. Africa is the exporting continent of the gospel. Give the Lord a hand clap. Listen, this, these things cannot be done by men. It is God that turns that which used to be a recipient now being a blessing to the rest of the world. 
But you see, even though we are blessing the world, it is still a trickle of what is possible. The potential is yet to be realized. And one of the keys to realizing that potential is training and equipping, which is why I believe so much in the SODIP vision. So, God's model of leadership development is best showcased in how he took an ordinary shepherd boy and turned him into Israel's fiercest warrior and eventually her greatest king. David had to pass through a process of leadership development, training and equipping that positioned him to be an instrument for God in his generation. All that Sodip is seeking to do is to raise such people that God can use. Remember our slogan in Sodip, don't localize when you can globalize. Amen? I hope you are not thinking of localizing the light you have received. In any case, you, should not, you can't localize light. Jesus himself said, who is it that lights a candle and puts a cover over it? You don't do that. You know why the Bible calls us salt and light? Salt has a local effect. You sprinkle it in its image. You don't throw salt around. That's your local ministry. But we are also light. How far can light shine? It depends on how much, how intense, how powerful it is beam. So who says that, you know, class of light is not just a name, a title, just to be here for two years, and then we go on doing other things. I was challenging, my, my dear brother is here, we're in the same so deep class, Pastor Akinola, and I was asking them on our platform sometime last year, I said, I hope we are still fervent. We used to be called fervent class. I said, how many of us are still fervent? Nobody answered. <laughs> Hopefully they were praying. <laughs> Fervently. It's not a title to be here for two years. Light class. And then we go and localize this in one corner. I was challenging class of the nations yesterday. I said, you can't bear the title class of the nations. And then after two years, you go and bury your head in one local church. Better just say you are not part of class of the nations. And wait until so deep start something like class of local champions. Then come and join that one. But you say class of the nation. You should by now from session one. Your prayer should be, Lord, which nation? Which nation? Don't wait for session six. You see, this is a commissioning ceremony, but the eye of the Lord is already looking for those that he will shoot very far. You are only in the quiver called Sodip now for sharpening. But after training, I mean, what's the point of training somebody and then you go back and do the same thing you were doing before Sodip? Did you hear what I just said? It doesn't make sense that you left something you were doing that was working for you. And then you came to so deep and you received these great truths, things that changed your life. And then you went back and were doing the same thing. May that not be your testimony in Jesus' name. May it be said, when we gather next year by the grace of God for the commissioning ceremony of the might class, that we are hearing exploits of what light class are doing in places. That's what we want to hear. Praise the name of the Lord. Training is for a purpose. And I will take the rest of my time to just highlight six things from one passage. Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Now, Psalm 18 is one of the longest psalms. There are several psalms that are long. Most psalms are very short. You know that. But Psalm 18 is one of those ones that has like 50 verses. So we're not going to read the whole thing. All right? But Psalm 18 is divided basically into three parts. You can subdivide it further, but three broad parts. The first part is the cry of a man who was in distress and how God came to his rescue. How God delivered David from his enemies. The second part from verse 28, I think, to 36, there about 37, describes the process that God took this man through so that he will not always be crying out, be running away, be fleeing from the enemy. 
Because enemies will always be there. But God is not looking for people that will continue to run away from the enemy. And then he will be coming to their rescue every time. God wants to train warriors out of weaklings so that they can stand at the gates and contend with the enemy. The last part is now the things that he did after he was trained and then ultimately his ascription of glory to God when he said, it is God who did this. So we're going to focus on just the middle part because of time. And that is from verse 28 to 36. Psalm 18, 28 to 36. I'll read from the New King James, draw out a few parallels for us to highlight the need for training and the effect and impact of training when done properly. So from verse 28 of Psalm 18, it says, For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. You will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. What does training do or what should training do? Training should bring light into our lives. Hallelujah. Training should bring understanding that we did not have before. And I'm sure you will agree with me. There's a clarity now about the purposes of God, about the divine priorities, which you may not have been aware of before now. Am I correct? Light comes. You will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. So the first thing is that ignorance should be shattered by light. Scripture says that the entrance of God's word brings light and gives understanding to the simple. Our primary tool for ministry is the word of God. And the primary textbook for training in Sodip is the word of God. So we are not permitted to go through Sodip and remain ignorant. We have learned about Bible study methods, Bible survey, authority of scripture. It is now left for us to sit with that word and shatter ignorance because light has come. You see that the man who has light goes on in the next verse to say, for by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. That's a man who has light. He goes on to say, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. You don't prove the word of the Lord in a comfortable surrounding. The word of the Lord is proven when everything else is against you. Somebody talked to Sister Choma talked about MIC, minimum inhibitory concentration. There should be a minimum level of the word that is, is, is bursting within you. is looking for means of expression. Do you know why evangelism is hard for many people? There is not enough word stored inside them. What is evangelism? It's sharing the word of God. Is that not so? When the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, what happens? When something is plenty inside, it looks for an outlet. It is not safe for you to have too much word inside you and it is not being dispensed. It is not safe. It is not healthy for you. Did you hear what I said? It's not healthy for you. There are experiences and encounters you have with the word that you, you, you are looking for opportunity. You are uncomfortable until you share it. That's one of the effects of storing the word inside. You are looking... Who needs this? How can I get this out? Because it's eating you on the inside. There's too much of it. That's what happened to Peter and John when they stood before the Sanhedrin. And they said, don't preach anymore. They say, I'm sorry, we can't help it. There are things we have seen and things we have heard that you choose whether we should obey you or we should obey God. But as for us, we can't help but speak about the things we have seen and heard. When somebody says, I can't help it, what does that mean? He is powerless. You're not getting what I'm saying. When somebody says, I couldn't help it, 
They are simply trying to say that it was beyond my control. We want the, the storage of the word inside to become beyond our control to keep it inside. We want to let it out. Now you understand what scripture meant when it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you. How? Richly, not scantily. So that you will be oozing the word. You will be, word will just be bursting out of you. Even the unbeliever who doesn't want to hear gospel, just by sitting near you, the word is just biting him or biting her. Because there's so much inside. So, David said, you will lighten my lamp. I will run against the troop. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? The second thing we see about training and equipping there is in the next verse. It says, it is God who arms me with strength. Training in the word arms us with strength. So weakness is replaced by strength. Weakness is replaced by strength. It is God who arms me with strength. When you use the word armed, we are talking about conflict or battle. And who can deny that we are in an age of battle? We are in an age when the conflict of the ages have come together, they have come upon our generation now. And only those who know they are God and are strong, they are the ones who will do exploit. Those who don't know they are God will be weak and they will be exploited. As we sometimes say in Sodium. It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. Training is arming us with strength. Putting weapons in our hands to face the battle. Amen. Goes on to say, He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on high places. He teaches my hands to make war. That's the third thing I want to draw out here about training. Training, proper equipping, ought to teach our hands to make war. I learned something from Brother Femi, you know, um, sometime last year. He was teaching in a meeting and he said, we are actually not called to a war. We are called to make war. Do you understand making war? What does it mean? It means you are the one that initiates the warfare. Training should teach our hands to make war. Some of us are waiting for the war to come to our doorstep before we rise up against it. No, we are sent to go to war, not to wait for war. You are not getting what I'm saying. David said that you teach my hands to make war. When you've been trained... You don't wait for situations to come up. You go out there and confront the enemy. You see, the devil is at I'm not trying to promote the devil. But the reality is that his works are evident all around us. False. So what should we do? We should take the, the battle to the gates of the enemy. You teach my hands to make war. To make war means that you take the step. You take the offensive, not play the defensive. You teach my hands to make war. Not just to fight in a war. When it is brought to you, you make war. So we should be looking around now. Where is it that I need to make war? Where is it that, you know, many of us are waiting for situations. Then we rise up. No. We are the ones who should be rising up against situations is that not what the bible says arise and shine for your light has come it didn't say sit down and wait until darkness comes to you. it says you arise and shine for your light has come that's why you should be the one rising up it is in our rising up verse 3 it says that gentiles and kings will now come we can't harvest the Gentiles and the kings out there without rising up. So David said he was trained how God taught his hands to make war. So deep has taught your hands to make war. 
You see, before now, people could say, well, this ministry training thing is good. See, I'm a civil servant, and if I have time, maybe I'm on leave, I can decide to go and learn more Bible, just so that I can be a better Christian. No, it's not good enough just to learn Bible to be a better Christian now. In an atmosphere of war, you can't sit down just to be a good Christian. God is not trying to raise Christ, good Christians anymore. That version has expired. God is trying to raise warriors. Are you with me? We've learned about marketplace ministry. We should go there and make war. Did I say we should be fighting with our people in our workplace? No, no, no. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But you know the works of the enemy that are thriving in the environments where you and I go and live and work and study daily. We should be making war on university campuses. The things that have dragged a whole generation of young people away from the Lord. We should be making war in the marketplace. Making war anywhere that we see that the enemy... The Bible says that Jesus was made manifest that he may do what? Destroy the works of the devil. Now, Jesus should be made manifest in you and I to continue that work. Praise the Lord. He teaches my hands to make war. And he makes my way perfect. So that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Number four. The defenseless is now covered. It says, you have also given me the shield of your salvation. Training is a shield. Training defends you from the things that they... Do you know that there are truths that you now know as light class that before there are things that could intimidate you? That was my experience. When we did the God course in Sodip, from eight years ago, I, I asked myself, what is it then that can threaten me now? Because suddenly God became so big in my eyes in a way that he wasn't before. The size of God was just increasing and I'm wondering, what is it that can threaten me now? So when things come against you, you have a shield of salvation. What is that? It's the shield. That's the word of God that you can use and say, no, this is not going to get to me. You know, one of the things that I honestly desire that Christians will learn in this season is that we are living at a time when the enemy wants to extinguish our faith more than ever before. And he's using economic pressures and everything. If you don't have a shield, then the fiery darts of the enemy, people think that thing is just to make you sin. No, no, no. It's to make you doubt God, which is a sin. So people are saying, Life is hard. That's a fact. But what is the truth? God is able to keep me through the hardest and harshest seasons of life. Is that not what scripture says? So what truth are we going to live by? We have a defense. We have a shield that saves us from the onslaught of the enemy. Training arms you to be able to lift that shield against the onslaught of the enemy. Number five. It says, your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. So through training and proper equipping, insignificant becomes great. From verse 1 of Psalm 18, he started out a weakling. Of course, I mean, we all face situations where we cry out to God, and we should. Don't get me wrong. We are not promoting independence from the Lord here. But we are saying, look, a point comes when you have been armed, you've been trained, that there are things that you could not withstand before, now you can stand. Do you know that there is nothing wrong with greatness? You know, the evangelical background where some of us were raised, we were taught that don't seek greatness. Of course, we are not to seek greatness. But do you know that God himself wants to raise great people? A great God cannot be interested in raising lily livered you know wimpy people who are constantly defeated in life god is looking for great people god is not threatened by our greatness because he is the one who actually makes us great it says there now he says you have given me the shield of salvation your right hand has held me up your gentleness has made me great 
Some version says it has made me strong. So insignificant becomes great. we need to be equipped if we are going to move from ignorance to revelation to understanding having light if strength is going to replace our weakness as a church in Africa and the church in Africa has many weaknesses numbers is one of our strengths and we have certain strengths don't get me wrong the church in Africa I celebrate what God has done and what God is doing but we have a number of glaring weaknesses and many of those things are things that can be solved. We don't have time to examine them one by one, but there are, there are manifest weaknesses that if the African church is going to lead the global church in this century, those weaknesses have to be addressed. One of them is through training, equipping. Do you know that a good percentage of church leaders have never been trained? What in the percentage, sir? 95% of African church leaders have never had any kind of formal training that equips them for the work that they are doing. That's a weakness in the African church. Because we are so used to Holy Spirit. You say, oh, the Holy Spirit will do it. Or because the man can speak in tongues for three hours, we just assume, listen, speaking in tongues doesn't solve all problems. Man needs to be taught. 95% of African church leaders have never been trained. Do you then wonder why the church is the way it is? With so many charlatans, with so, many confusion, so much confusion within the church, many blind people following many blind people. Because the light of the word that brings understanding, and have you seen some of those things that people are doing? I, it, it's, it's amazing. Nigerian government is very tolerant to, church, to churches. There are some countries they would have shut down half of the churches in this country by now. You don't like what I'm saying, but it's the truth. A few years ago, people were saying, oh, president of Rwanda, why, is, why are they trying to... Me, I was saying, let them do it. If you see the level of abuse in the African church, you can't have that anywhere else. And now our brothers are exporting that even to other parts of the world and they are trying to do that there. But thank God that the governments there are aware. You can't just go there and do anything. Say because you speak in tongues. So what? There are weaknesses that can be dealt with through proper teaching, training. I'm not talking about going to a seminary for six, seven years. I'm saying come to Sodi for two years. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Listen. There are weaknesses, but they can be overcome. They can be overcome. In conclusion, I charge you, class of light, this is not the end of your training. 
This is the beginning. There are things you have heard that will shape your understanding going forward for decades to come as the Lord will grant you life and keep you in his vineyard. Whether you are in the marketplace, you are in church, or any other platform that the Lord has placed you, there are equippings that you have gotten in the School of Divine Priorities that will now help you to become a solution provider in the places where he will plant you. Say amen. amen. There are things that, I, I, I believe that this is not the end. This is just the beginning. Because beyond the formal training in Sodip, there are things that God will bring into your life that will make the teachings you've received in class very relevant and practical. You will begin to see, in re there, are, there, are th there are times now when I'm invited to share in some places, honestly, there are things I want to do that I used to do before. But when I remember one class that Femi taught, I think it was during Favent class, about dangerous mistakes leaders make. Did you do that course? <laughs> When the word of God bypasses your heart and lands in your mouth, you want to go and preach like Balaam. I say, no, let this word first pass through my own heart. Let's stay with it until something has happened in me, then I can speak it out in the way that God wants it to. So that's why I say this is not the end. It's just the beginning. There are some things you have heard that will haunt you from now on. They won't let you go. Say Amen. Unless you want to be free and go and do anything you want to do. Business as usual. But there are things, the word of God actually imprisons us. Do you know that? It makes us captive. Slaves of righteousness. That we may do right. So we're going to just make a prayer as we close this particular sharing. And that prayer is Lord. Two prayers, two, two prayer points. Father, sharpen my life. Let me be an answer to this season in Africa. Let this Kairos season not pass us by and we're still doing business as usual. We are an indebted continent. And I'm not talking about owing the IMF or World Bank or China. We are debtors of the gospel. The world is waiting for us. Can we just make that prayer? Lord, sharpen my life. Light up my life. Increase the intensity of light in me that I may be a solution in this Kairos moment from the African church for your global purposes. Some of you are in IT. You are software developers. Some of you are in the world of medicine, healthcare, some in legal profession. This goes beyond the class of light. It's for every one of us here. Lord, sharpen my life. In my platform, my place of ministry, sharpen my life. David said it is God that trains his fingers for battle and his hands for war. Tell God to equip you, prepare you. You want to be on a journey of continual transformation, learning and being trained for his purposes to prosper in our hands father make us vessels of honor do what only you can do in us help us that the african church we do not squander this kairos moment that we are positioned to bring the solutions of heaven into the situations that you place us in as the african church in the name of jesus Second prayer point, can you ask God, imprison me to your word. Make me a slave, a captive of your word. That I do not live and do ministry anyhow, anymore. But by the word, rightly dividing the word of truth. Lord, make me a prisoner. Bind me with holy chains. Make me a prisoner of your word. Make me a prisoner of your word. The word of God is the tool for training. It's the instrument for sharpening and preparing men for usable and impactful ministry. The word of God. Make me a slave. Make me a captive of your word. Imprison me to your truth. Let me never be. Let me never be. 
I surrender myself to your word. I surrender myself to your word. Oh, Father, do a work in us. Leave us permanently under the control and influence of your word that the African church in this season may have a blessing to take to the world. They have seen our buildings. They've heard our music. But now they need to see the purity of the word being preached from African lips with power and conviction to bring a blessing to the nations. Father, do your work in us. Use us here as catalysts. Use us here as multipliers, as transmitters of your truth across the nations of the earth. Let the light of your word, O oh God, pierce through the darkness of our generation, even through us, as we commit and consecrate ourselves to you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much, sir, for that very timely word. Uh, light class, you, there you have it. We have been charged to go forth and shine the light. Amen. So we now have a final charge, a final charge before we now go into the commissioning and the prayer for the graduating class, the final charge, and the charge we brought to us by the uh, international, the general coordinator of Vitality Ministries and the international director of Truth Institute, Dr. Ferdinand Mweke. Praise the Lord. Amen. Light class, congratulations. Let's give God praise. You look gorgeous. Praise God. Please, you may be seated. Thank you all very much. Um, welcome. Welcome. Please come in, everyone. Uh, sit down, settle in. Just a couple of things, and then we will be out of here. This is not the time for long preaching. Um, we've spent a lot of time together, but this is a day for commissioning. And uh, we want to thank God because uh, this is the beginning, like God has spoken uh, through his servant. And we have great expectations about what God is going to do through you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, let me backtrack a bit to welcome everyone. Uh, I will not be long. I will just attend to some general things. And then I have something the Lord said I should get across to you. A word. And then we will pray for you in closing. So, everyone welcome. If you are a family member of one of the graduating People. Uh, can you put up your hand? Wave at me. You are a, a spouse, wife, son, daughter. Oh, that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Praise the Lord. So, um, they have some of their family members. Uh, any of the wives, you are one of the wives of these men. Any, any wife in this place? Okay, we have a wife there. What has happened to your husband since he came to the school of divine priorities? <laughs> Is it the same? Is it changed? What has happened? What, what did she say? He's no longer normal. He's not, he's not normal anymore. Okay, praise the Lord. Any husband? Husband? Husband of one of these uh, brethren? Okay, I don't see anyone. But we want to thank you, family members, for coming to um, one, of, one of the wives of a Sodeep graduate told the husband, he said, I'm going to follow you to that place. I want to know what they did to you. <laughs> I 
And that's how I think she herself ended up, ended up in the training. And we want to give God praise and glory for all that he's doing. And we want to bless his name alone in Jesus' name. Amen. So friends, family, we are all welcome. Um, I want to particularly welcome the chairman of the board of Eternity Ministries, uh, Dr. Emmanuel Ndububa and his dear wife, <laughs> Professor Fumi Ndububa. Please stand, stand. Don't sit down too quickly. Stand, sir. <laughs> this is, this, this family, they are our chairman in Eternity Ministries. Uh, and we want to publicly acknowledge how God has made you a blessing to us as individuals and to the vision. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Mama Eternity. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, the other group I want to acknowledge are our faculty members. God bless you. Thank you very much for that clap offering. Can you stand up? Give them a, a, a standing ovation for faculty members. Thank you. Now, can I request our faculty members to please stand? I want to request you to stand if you are one of our faculty at the School of Divine Priorities. Uh, Pastor Julius, I don't see you standing. Amen. Dr. Tutu, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Pastor Israel, you know, keep standing for a moment. <laughs> now they don't want to stop. It's okay. Yes, you two stand. Stand, uh, Mrs. Fedna. <laughs> you know what part of what multiplies the impact of the training is that it is not a one man label God is bringing people contributing from different angles and by the time the thing is done people's lives are transformed the Lord bless you we appreciate the wisdom the experience that you continue to bring into this training there are several other faculty members who are not here some of them are you know, I mean, you, you had your faculty from South Africa teaching uh, in the last few days. And we want to celebrate all of our faculty members. Please, you may be seated. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, where does this School of Divine Priorities come from? The School of Divine Priorities is actually an initiative of eternity ministries. Uh, please follow uh, so that I can go straight to the point. And I'm not going to read all that you have in this booklet, but if you notice at page 3, it summarizes what Eternity Ministries is all about. We want to live with eternity in view. Number two, we want to see Calvary maximized. And then number three, we want to raise other people to do the same. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. If you want to find the real value of anything, divide it by forever. Everything does not end here. It is important to live in time with eternity in view. Hallelujah. And we realize that Jesus paid a price so that he can get a prize. Price with C. You pay, prize with Z is what you get. And the burden on our hearts that God has brought to us is that Calvary must be maximized. Hallelujah. The final component is that we cannot do this all by ourselves. So we must multiply the doers. Huh? John Molly said, he who does the work is not so profitably employed as the person that multiplies the doers. And you know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 9, he said, the harvest is plenty, the laborers are few. So what was the solution that he prescribed? He said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he may send out, push out laborers into his harvest field. And the school of divine priorities is about multiplying laborers, helping to raise other laborers um, who can also engage um, the harvest. Hallelujah. 
If you look at page four, you will see the summary of our strategy. It is something that we call missions by multiplication. You see, the time is too short now to be doing missions by addition. You know, you do 20 years in a mission field before you win one convert. We don't have time for that. I am not downplaying, I'm not downplaying the work of missionaries and other people that have labored, but I'm simply saying that there is need to accelerate if we are going to see um, the harvest of the nations. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So, by God's grace, we want to multiply prayer, multiply laborers, multiply platforms, so that the gospel is moving out from every platform, and then multiply truth, so that it is producing um, results in every format, and then multiply resources as well as partnerships, and then the final component is multiplying fire. Because without fire, uh, nothing will be ignited. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. So we want to thank God for this evening. And uh, let me say before I specifically address the class of light, and of course all of us, that you are welcome to enroll in the School of Divine Priorities. Uh, do we have some forms that are available? You have some forms. So if you pass by, I don't want to just distribute those forms, but if you are interested in the School of Divine Priorities, if you put up your hand, they can give you a form. Or if you pass by the um, exit door there, you can also pick up a form. You can also get a link where you can complete the form online. And uh, it will be our joy to welcome you. There are some sessions coming up in July, and you can still join that session uh, and catch up with the new class. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The School of Divine Priority started in 2011, and since that time, by the grace of God, we have seen more than 300 leaders trained and released into the harvest. And some of the things that God is doing through the uh, people that have been commissioned at the School of Divine Priorities is just, is mind-boggling. It's amazing. And uh, all the glory belongs to God. Currently, there are much more than 100 in training here in Nigeria, in Kenya, uh, in Sierra Leone. And by the grace of God, this April, we are also starting the School of Divine Priorities in Ethiopia in Uganda. Those ones are commencing this April. And right now, as we're having this program, there are two leaders uh, working with Eternity Ministries. They are in Asia, somewhere in Nepal. And their goal is to establish the School of Divine Priorities to multiply laborers uh, for the advancement of God's kingdom. Uh, if you are doing ministry and your ministry is not multiplying laborers, what you are doing is not very strategic. Because the problem is laborers. There are no laborers. Glory to the Son of Almighty God in the name of Jesus Christ. And class of the nations, I hope you heard what God said to you through his servant. As you are in this class of the nations, one of the prayers you are praying is God. You brought me to class of the nations. So which nations? And the time to pray that prayer is now from session one. God, which, which nation are you sending me to face? Because uh, God is going to be using you to bring in his harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The first words I will say to you, uh, um, light class, is in 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Please help me to put up some of those scriptures. Uh, they will help. 2 Timothy chapter 2, from verse 1. I'm not going to read the whole verse, but it says in that place, 2 Timothy, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. I'm charging all of you, be strong. You know we studied grace. Don't just be, don't just be inside grace. 
be strong in the grace. You can be inside something and not be strong in it. I said, presence is not equivalent to strength. The fact that you are in a certain market does not mean that you are strong in that segment. This is the big problem with most Christians. They are in grace, but they are not strong in grace. They are not strong where they are located. So the benefits and the potentials are not manifested in them and for them and through them. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now look at verse 2. He said, And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. What is the instruction there? He said, Commit these things to faithful men and women who will also be able to teach others. In other words, you are not entitled to keep these things to yourself. It will be criminal to keep the things that God has given to you through all the servants of God, through the encounters that we have had with God in, the, in his presence in the class. It will not be right to keep this thing to yourself. And please take note that it was not Paul that we find the people for Timothy. Whose responsibility is it to find the faithful men to whom you would commit those things? It's not Brother Paul that would say, hey, hey, all of you, come, come, come. Oh, yeah, now sit down. Oh, yeah, Timothy, uh, come transmit me something. No. It was Timothy's responsibility to do what? To find faithful men. Multipliers. Oh, God. Raise multipliers for these things. Raise multipliers. This is the cry of our heart. Multiply multipliers. People that will receive these things and multiply. Multiply. Look at Brother Mark. Mark, permit me to use you as an example. Mark is the one, it's through him that School of Divine Priorities went to East Africa. He went to the place, he said, sir, we must have the School of Divine Priorities here. I, I told him, I said, how? He said, don't worry, we are going to start. We will make him, make him, make effort. We will organize. That's how so deep we went, did introduction. He mobilized people. We started the School of Divine Priority. And those people in East Africa, they are not waiting for those of you here in Nigeria. I'm giving you information. The people are running with the thing. They are running with it. They are multiplying. They are taking the training to the... To the now they are planning to do it in Swahili. They are going to the nations with it. Ethiopia, Uganda. They are talking to me about the Middle East. Somebody said Dubai. They want to target Dubai. Because it's a place where many nations gather together. Don't keep this thing to yourself. I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. I charge you. Don't keep this thing to yourself. If you do, you'll be minimizing yourself and your possibilities. But if God uses you to multiply this thing, you are going to find enlargement. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Eh? Verse 3. Endure hardship as a good soldier of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are lots of things in that passage. I'm not going to go over them one by one, but please take note of them. There are other charges. You know, preach the word the apostle told um, Timothy. He said, preach the word in season and out of season. But I think that it has been summarized by the scripture that we have read in Timothy. Remember too, class of light, that we saw that ministry is not activity. Ministry is your life. Ministry is your life. Ministry is not running around. Ministry is who you are. Men, you cannot gather grapes from thorns. People are not going, going to gather, you know, a praying life from a prayerless pastor. Ministry has to do with your life. It is who you are that is going to impact and help other people. So watch your life. Paul said to Timothy, he said, take heed to yourself and to your doctrine. Continue in these things because in doing that, you will save both yourself and those that hear you. Guard your heart. Live a life that honors God. You remember we saw that we must live with eternity in view. This is not 
This is not just a good sermon. This is by the grace of God how we have decided to live. Live a life that honors Christ in secret and in, in public. Take it to yourself. The days are evil. Don't make any assumptions and the grace of God will be multiplied to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I was praying for you and seeking the Lord what to say to you and the Lord brought a few scriptures and uh, so the topic of this last segment which is very brief is a great light. A great light. So come with me now to Matthew chapter 4 and once I'm done with all of this, we are going to pray for you. Uh, there are elders, there are faculty members, they are going to be praying for you. You will receive an impartation. This is not empty. This is not an empty ceremony. An anointing will rest upon you today in the name of Jesus. You, you will go out of this place in the power of the Holy Spirit. Manif or Manifestations of the Spirit will burst out through your life. Gifts that you never knew before will begin to function through you. That is what happens when people receive an impartation when they have gone through a process. In Matthew chapter 4, the Bible says from verse 12, now when Jesus heard, Matthew chapter 4 from verse 12, when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee. You see, this John the baptizer, the Bible says, a put him when he was put in prison. So what happened to his baptism from the moment he was put in prison? What happened to his baptizing ministry? Did John baptize anybody else from that moment that they put him inside prison? I hope you remember that from prison, what was the next thing that happened to him? He was beheaded. You must walk the works of him that sent you while it is yet day. The night is coming when no man can walk. I am conscious of the fact that I will not always be here. <laughs> I know that a day is coming. People are going to say, where is Brother Ferdinand? They say he's gone. I'm not going to die now, so don't think I'm doing benediction. <laughs> By the grace of God, I'm still here. By God's grace. But I know, I'm conscious of it that one day I will not be here. So I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is yet day. The night came for John and all of the baptizing ministry, as powerful as it was, that matter had ended. Serve God during the window of opportunity and privilege that God has granted you. Life is a vapor. You can see, Pastor Brother Richard started the training with you. Richard is not there. Maybe he's the one that could have been sitting on that chair there. He's gone. He's gone to heaven. Verse 13. And leaving Nazareth, Matthew chapter 4 verse 13, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, by the sea coast, in the regions of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. That, why did Jesus leave Nazareth? Why did he come to stay in Capernaum? Why did he come to locate in that particular area to fulfill prophecy? You will fulfill prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You see, many believers are unaware that there are prophecies that are hanging, waiting for the people that God will use to accomplish them. You can fulfill positive prophecy or you can fulfill negative prophecy. That's a dangerous point there. The Bible says, in the last days, the love of many, what is going to happen to, every, to them now, the love of many will wax cold. But do you know that your name is not in that verse? It doesn't say the love of Brother Ferdinand is going to wax cold. That's what nobody says. It says the love of many. But if you are not careful, you can enter inside that many. 
He said, the people that do know their God, what is going to happen, they will be strong and they will do exploit. Notice he didn't mention people's names. He just mentions their characteristic. Jesus took deliberate steps to see prophecy fulfilled. You are going to, I like what the servant of God was teaching about making war. You don't sit down somewhere and as a leader, uh, uh, as a leader, light class, you don't go and sit down somewhere and you are waiting for something to happen. A leader doesn't sit down somewhere and wait for something to happen. A leader happens to things. You don't sit down somewhere and wait for something to happen. You, what do you mean you are waiting for something to happen? Or you are waiting for somebody to give you assignment? No, there is a vision burning inside you. Hallelujah. And you are going to take steps to fulfill prophecy. What is this prophecy that required food? Or it this prophecy has been hanging for 700 years. You can read it in the book of Isaiah chapter 9. Can you imagine a prophecy hanging for 700 years? Waiting for the right person through whom this prophecy will be fulfilled. What was the prophecy? It says, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. By the way of the sea. Beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, verse 16. The people who did what? Everybody now? Who sat in darkness. What did the Bible say has happened to them now? They have seen a great light. In other words, these people have been sitting. Can you imagine generations of people sitting in that darkness? In the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. And they'll be reading this Isaiah prophecy. You know they'll be reading this Isaiah prophecy. You remember when Jesus went to the synagogue, they gave him the book of Isaiah. He read it. They've been reading this thing for hundreds of years. And somebody is wondering, when will this great light arrive here? For people to sit in darkness describes the bondage and hopelessness of the situation. Do you know that you don't sit in darkness? If Nepa, if the power company takes light in your house, do you sit in the darkness? You get up, you try to, you do your hand like this if you are not sure of the geography of your house. <laughs> you know, many of us know the geography of the house. But you start doing like this. You start doing like this to feel something. You don't sit down inside darkness. But the matter had gotten to a point where these ones are sitting inside darkness. And maybe as they sat where they sat, there is an echo of a prophecy that will be fulfilled one day of a great light that will arrive. That prophecy came to pass. He said they've seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and the shadow of death. You see, when the shadow is present, the reality is not far away. I said, when the shadow, now you see, you see the you see my shadow here. It means that the owner of this shadow is nearby. So for people to sit in the shadow of death, first and second, physical and eternal death, they are sitting in the shadow of death. So they are just waiting to breathe their last, and death will harvest them into damnation. That's where they are sitting down. But something happened to them. He said, light sprung up. You are going to fulfill prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You will not just be light. You will be a great light. Pilate, I said a great light. I want you to listen. All lights are not equal. All lights are not equal. Jesus said you are the light of the world. But I want you to know that all lights are not equal. Genesis chapter 1, I don't have time to read it. He said, God made two great lights. He said, one to rule the day and another one to rule the night. All lights are not equal. The intensity of light are not equal. The reach of light are not equal. You know there is this, you see, this is light. Candle is light. Your touch light is light. But there is flood light. Are you familiar with flood light that they use in the stadium? The intensity and the determinant of 
the impact of light is the intensity of the light itself. You will be intense in the name of Jesus Christ. See, the temperature of your spirit, there will be something burning inside you. You are going to be a great light in your generation. The people that sat in darkness, they will not, it will not just be light. Poor! Why we said the great light appeared. And suddenly, people that sat in darkness, light and life and salvation and deliverance. Listen, there is a war that is sitting in darkness. God didn't train you for you to go and sit down somewhere. You go and sit down beside the people that are sitting in darkness. And you are waiting for something to happen. All of you in this light class, you can't get away from here and say you don't know what to do. You cannot say that. You can't go away from here and say you don't know what to do. This is not a game that we are playing here. Eternity is at stake. Eternity is at stake. This world, as you know, it will soon pass away. All of these things that people are gathering, they are passing, they are passing. They are, if you look at the world properly, you can see that the clock is counting down. Any, do I have any witness inside this place? You can see that. I don't want to live for this passing world. What kind of light is this going to be? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Huh? The same was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And then listen, they say, and that light shines in the darkness. You will shine in the darkness in the name of Jesus. The darkness will not be able to comprehend you, and they will be powerless to apprehend you. You will live a life that darkness cannot arrest. A great light. This is the divine announcement over your life. The Lord said, he said, tell them that a great light is what is going to shine through them. He is not just light. This is Jesus. He brought, this is the light of the world. He take a piper. He said, when Jesus arrived, and I want you to know, Capernaum was the beginning. He became the base. That great light is still shining in the darkness. It's still shining through the lives of these people, these servants of God, every believer. Do you know that that great light is resident inside you? Why will you carry him to your office and there will be darkness in that place? All of you that are comfortable with darkness, you, you don't mind darkness around you. What kind of Christian life is this? You are wondering what's the problem with Nigeria? The problem with Nigeria is darkness. What's the solution to darkness? It's light. And where are the light? Who is carrying that light? The Bible says concerning John the Baptist, he was a burning and a shining light. There are two things that are going to happen to you shortly. The intensity of your light is going to multiply. And I want you to listen. The height of the light the height of the light. He said, nobody lights a lamp and puts it where? Under a bushel. But where do you put it? On a stand. Time. God is raising the height of your light. I said, God is raising the height of your light in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Something will be burning inside you. I want, to, I want to make an announcement to you. You will not be able to live a normal life oh, after today. You will just realize that I can't do what other people are doing. I can't, I can't keep quiet where they are keeping quiet. Something Jeremiah said, I decided that I'm not going to preach. I'm going to resign. He said, but his word was like fire. Shut up inside my bones. And I could not keep quiet. Preaching became an outlet. That's what the man of God was saying. There is a generation that are sitting in darkness and heaven has equipped you. Tonight, you are going to receive an impartation of the Holy Spirit. Many of you, you have seen things in your life before. God has helped you. You are not babies. This man is my friend, your class captain. We've been friends for years. God has helped this man. But I heard the Holy Spirit saying, you will see greater things than this. 
everything that you have. You didn't hear what Brother Mark said. You didn't hear what the man of God said. They said he can divide his ministry into pre so deep and post so deep. You think it's a joke? He's not joking. He's not trying to impress Ferdinand. He's telling the truth. When you follow that story, the Bible said, from that time, can you put that up, that same scripture? He said, from that time, Jesus began to preach. And what was he saying? He said, repent. You are going to go out preaching, you know. You will preach, you will preach in the marketplace. You will preach from a church pulpit. The people of God are hungry. The people are perishing. There is that. He said, arise, shine. Because why? Your light has arrived. Listen, light class, your light has arrived. You are not waiting for anything else. You will arise, you will shine. Don't sit down somewhere and say you are waiting for somebody. You are waiting for coordinator. To, including those of you who are our staff. You are waiting for coordinator. You are not waiting for coordinator. You say, my friend, now why are you talking to us like this? Because this is it. We, the, we are going to commission you now. And like Mark said, stay connected. This is not the end. You have become part of a community of fire. A community of convictions. Network among yourselves. Iron sharpens iron. So the light, we keep the light burning. Continue the fellowship. Don't end it. When Jesus came there to preach, the Bible says, before he began to preach, the Bible says, he went to the wilderness for testing. And then Luke chapter 4 verse 14 tells us what happened. After he was tested, he said, and Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. That would be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. You are going to return from this place in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the people that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, they will see a great light. Come on, light class. I said they will see a great light. They will see a great light. And you that you are here in this commissioning, everything I've said to these men and women applies to you because it's in scripture. It's, it's in the Bible. And all you need to do is to receive it into your spirit and say, God, you will not pass me by. My light is also going to shine. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Somebody said, my friend, I'm not a full-time preacher. Who, who, who is talking about full-time? If you're a, full, a part-time Christian, is a full-time sinner. If you are doing part-time with Jesus, what are you doing the remaining time for? You are full-time. You are as full-time as... See, Jesus said you are the light of the world. You cannot have part-time light. He said you are the salt of the earth. You cannot be salt part-time. So the idea that you know I'm not called is a joke. He said I am not ordained. What are you talking about? Jesus Christ said you have not chosen me, but I chosen you and I have ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. Then you sit and say, I'm not ordained. Are you saying that after Jesus has ordained you, you are not ordained because church, human beings have not ordained you? You are called, you are ordained, you are a servant of God. You carry Christ inside your spirit. And that light is going to shine through you. See, let there be light. Come on, somebody in this place, let there be light. Everybody go away from this commissioning and your mantra is let there be light. Let there be light in NMPC. Let there be light in offices. Light in the pits of corruption. Let there be light. In the brother, the prostitutes are. Among the Almagiris, among the unrich peoples, let there be light. In campuses, let there be light. Rise up on your feet and let us begin to pray. And a great light. Somebody begin to pray in this place. Prato katoa, kataisa paria, dupra, ito. Prat so pakalana kushte bari kabatai. Susulata pari apatai, patai, patai, patai. Express your heart to the Father God. The people that sat in darkness. Shototso, Tarianda Mansoya. Oh, Sipalakatoa. 
Shumbo Sindrisi Pakalata Thai. Let there be light. Let there be light on the pulpits of God. Let there be light in the nations. Let there be light in this country. Let there be light in that secondary school, in that primary school where heaven has located you. Let there be light. Let there be light on that campus. Sanamina Tai, you are serving quit notice on darkness. The people that sat in darkness, come on, light class. They have seen a great light. Oi, oi, ko, suakata boruka stopa yalata, suda, 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 tate, supale, kalasala. Let there be light. You are taking your place. You are taking your place. A great light. Hai poto kuto prazo. Stendrisi mandosa, plasim barazza, pai katarazza. He was a burning and a shining light. Oh, he was a burning and a shining light. Paiso, 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 Candrisa, Paria. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, see, Palamianda Lakishe Kali Pataraya. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, um, uh, light class, can you come? Can you come forward, line up, uh, and then leave some space in between where people can pass? Come, man of God, form a line in front, then others behind. Others behind, leave some space. I'm going to be calling our chairman, Dr. Emmanuel Ndububa. This man of God has led us all of these years at Eternity Ministries, and uh, He's going to be leading this commission. Just spread out. Okay, you can actually spread out on one line. Uh, go back, step back a bit so that people can walk in front of you. Okay, that's fine. And let's have some ushers that may be able to help. Uh, some of our sisters and brothers come around. And please, let's have our faculty members, all faculty members, please come. Because we are going to, we are going to come, Pastor Julius. Uh, Pastor Debayo, please come. Uh, Brother Mark, we are going to minister to them. Uh, Dr. Ndubasa, uh, uh, please lead us in this segment. I want us to stretch our hands towards them. And I want all of you here standing, let's spend some little time praying the Spirit. Receive the words and convert them to prayer points for yourself. Let's pray for them also, those of us who are not standing in front. 
convert the words you've had to prayer points for yourself and pray more in the spirit kaida kaida roka kahala hande hallelujah convert them to prayer points ha 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 say to yourself be done to me according to your word talk like mary be done to me according to the word of the servant of god that i've just heard yes lord let it be done to them let it be on to these ones according to the exhortation according to the prophetic utterances according to the word spoken by god through his servant let it be unto me according to his word yes lord oh ha -ha. Ha -ha -ha. i am the light of the world my light has come ha -ha. the people that sat in darkness in my environment a great light has sprung up through me unto them <laughs> Woo, glory to god thank you father hallelujah lord release your anointing lord release your anointing upon this world in the mighty name of Jesus, Kaida Boho Prahadash, Sekitu Supra, Menga, 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 the two Kribun Krohola. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, God. Remember these ones today and visit them. Let there be divine visitation. Let there be divine visitation. Let there be divine visitation in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember them. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, how. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you kneel? just kneel down? Let the faculty, you are the ones that impacted them and imparted the word to them. Come closer, place your hands on them. You are sending them forth. You have taught them. Lay hands on them. Nika! Nika! If a faculty lay hands on them, you have spoken to them, now release the anointing to do the work unto them. Every one of them must receive your hands upon them and prophetic utterance. The rest of us, let's keep praying for these ones. Just keep praying for them. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Release the anointing of God upon them. The anointing that breaks every yoke. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Rokaka. Linda Revoko Obrahanda. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O God. We receive her. We receive her. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. We receive her. Hallelujah. Maritoli Mankaha, Lake Kribun Kohomaha. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We receive her. The, we receive her. We receive her. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
<laughs> in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mokaka. Like ke 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 ke. Paratole monko hoba. Hey. The anointing that makes a person to fear God, we receive it. Hallelujah. Hey, la kaka. Uka, 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 uka. Liti maratole ma. Let's see Krikina Mohongo. Wakahala. Lekini maha. Hey. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Maratoli Mahanka. Makai Nahan. Maratuse Proha. Shekatu So Prahanga. Likaha. Makala Mahan. I receive the Holy Spirit. Receive fresh anointing. Receive direction. Receive instruction from high. In the name of Jesus. Receive anointing of the Holy Spirit to perform. Receive instruction from heaven. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. Receive grace. Receive anointing of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Receive grace, brother. Ha. Fresh anointing for the walk ahead in the name of Jesus. Receive strength. Strength. Receive strength. Receive strength. Receive strength. In the name of Jesus. Receive strength. Receive strength in the inner man. Strength in the inner man. Strength in the inner man. In Jesus' name. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Father. This is strength. This is strength. This is the anointing that breaketh every yoke. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Receive grace now. This is strength in the inner man. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be God. This is strength and grace. Hallelujah. To perform. In the name of Jesus. Receive grace. Anointing of the Holy Ghost to perform in the name of Jesus. Receive grace. Receive the anointing to do God's work that He has committed to your hands in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Oh, Sekitu
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have your way. Para tu liba. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Oh, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Oh, One more time. Let's just be quiet, except the Lord has a word from you. Now, Father, as a church, we lift up these ones before you. Lord, you have trained them these two years. Lord, you have equipped them these two years. Lord, you have taught them these two years. And now they are being commissioned to do the work that you have committed to their hands. And Lord, we are supporting them with prayer. And we are asking that God, you release your anointing upon their lives. So that God, the work you have committed to their hands, the assignments that you have allocated to them, that they may be able to accomplish them. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. <laughs> Thank you, God, for hearing us. For you are the God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask. And all that we can imagine. According to your power to work in us. Thank you for this power. Thank you for this power, Lord. And now, Lord, for these ones, as they step out from this place, henceforth, they have become changed people. In the name of Jesus, every dreams and visions of the Holy Ghost in their hearts, in their bellies, they are brought forth. They are accomplished. In the name of Jesus. Lord, they are taking steps. You told Joshua that anywhere the soles of their, of their feet shall tread upon, they have been given. And so as they take the steps now, out there into the world, we receive, oh God, the land for them. In the mighty name of Jesus. The fire of the Holy Ghost already in them let it be kindled let it burn and consume every chaff first in their own bodies in their own lives and everything around them in jesus name they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover in jesus name they will speak with new tongues in jesus name <laughs> they will accomplish great things because you have made them great in the name of jesus and the pleasure of God shall prosper in their hands. Hey! Your pleasure, daddy, will, will prosper in their hands. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, whatever be their careers and vocations, there will be a lifting up. Those around them will see the difference. In the name of Jesus. In their ministries, oh God, their profiting will appear unto all. Henceforth, in the name of Jesus. 
We receive all of this, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. And everyone else in this audience, just lift up your hands. You are in the presence of God. All of you, please stand. Just stand, lift up your hands as well. You are in this audience. God did not allow you to be here for nothing. Today may not be your commissioning, but there is a commissioning upon your life. Hallelujah. If you are sick in your body, I rebuke that sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of infirmity, I bind you and I cast you out of your bodies in Jesus' name. Go, go in the name of Jesus. Go from those bodies. Father, right now, let your hand of grace and mercy and power rest upon your people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Faculty members, congratulate them. The Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. It is well with you in the name of Jesus. The pleasure of the Lord will prosper in your hand. Something has shifted. You are not where you used to be. Step forward in power. Have great expectations. Dare the impossible. You are going to see God make a way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Congratulations. Congratulations. God bless you. Congratulations. Chama. Congratulations. Lady Banks. Hey, Mommy G. That function is still upon you. In the name of oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I knew if he was still up. <laughs> please, please help her. Brush the. Yeah, it's also somebody help this person here. Help, help. Brush the pakatai, pratotsi. Brush the patia, matai patosipra. Manatai kiparia pratsun petali kapata yapatar. Shinso palakadatai, sapariba. Congratulations. God bless you. Congratulations. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Congratulations. God bless you, bro. God bless you. Congratulations. Congratulations. I be. Congrats. Hallelujah. We honor you, servants of God. The Lord bless you. God bless you. Congratulations. Congrats. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. I think you may be seated and then uh, uh, the spirit is still there is a river flowing through these ladies and in fact, all of you there is something going on here. This is not an ordinary gathering. Yes. That river is flowing. It's pouring through you. Just help them. We will continue with other things. Don't rush them. Just continue. Let the Lord minister to them. Uh, what's next? Is that certificates? For more. Okay. I get it. Um, registrar. Can you come? And then the faculty members will help. The rest of you, can you shift when they call you? Then you just step forward. So let's call as many as possible. Faculty members, uh, sir, please come. Um, Mark, come. Uh, Pastor, Biodu, uh, Pastor Julius, please come, sir. Come and help us hand out this certificate. Prof. Rest. Uh, Nana, come. Okay, so... Just call and pass to them so that it can be done very quickly. Praise the Lord. So uh, we have uh, Atume Joy Jali. Choma Chuku de Chuku. Okay, Ruben. Nigga say it's not around. Uh, Moses Odo. Giak Sati Musa. Seth Arastus. Odus Sote Tosin, Pastor Odus Tosin, Oluwa Tosin Alabi, Ahmed Tula Kings, King, King, okay, King, Bemi Ebiranga, okay, Ebiranga, Sister Bemi, Collins. Pastor Collins, okay. Adewara Adebanke. 
Okay. Uh, Ibrahim Barnabas. Ibrahim Barnabas. Austin Moses. Adebayo Adedeji. Olajide Oluaf Femi. Jacob Ruben. Jacob Ruben. And then Simon Samuel. Simon Samuel. Samuel, yes. Thank you. I think we are done. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for coming. Everyone who is here, the Lord engineered your footsteps to be here. Whether you're a family member, or you are in the class of might, or you are in the class of the nations, or you are in our so deep seal. I saw some so deep soup participants. Thank you for coming. If you're a friend, a well-wisher, a will be so deep participants. Thank you. Our class of light, we are so proud of you. Thank you. The Lord has continually told us great things about you. Our ministry, our ministry prayer coordinator called me, I think it was last weekend, and she was saying that while she was praying, God was giving her words of wisdom and words of prophecy over the class of light. And I've told her to itemize everything we will send to you. The things that God had said. And most of them have been said by our keynote speaker and doctor already. But there are still others. God has great expectations of you. And I, I beg you, don't see yourself as you used to be or as ordinary. The deposit and investment God has put on the inside of you, they will yet bring forth hundredfold and more in the name of Jesus. You will be as a wonder to the nations in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you. And for the rest of us, our keynote speakers, are, we are very grateful. Thank you for always coming. And all, you're a part of us. God bless you. Sister Mina, his pretty wife, we are grateful. Thank you for being our assistant keynote speaker. <laughs> and sir, our board chairman, sir. Mommy, we see you. We are grateful. Every other person who has come, we might not be able to mention all the names, but from the depths of our hearts, we are very grateful. We ask, there's something we started last year. One of the things we have been asking the Lord is, Lord, how can we, the truth you have given us, the fire, how can we replicate it, even starting from the younger generation? And so we started So Deep Youth. Last year was the first. And this year we have So Deep Youth coming up from the 11th to the 18th of August. It looks far away, but because we don't want to wait till then, we have a conference coming up in two weeks' time, on the 27th to the 30th of March. It's a day conference, and it's a free conference. For as many young people, especially from the ages of 15 and above, our desire is that these things we are hearing in our a little bit old age, we want the young ones to begin to start from now and begin to do exploits for the kingdom. So if you want your ward or your child to be a part of the Ignition Youth Conference, it's going to be between the 27th and 30th of March, and it's holding at our office, the Ignition um, Conference. 27th is a Wednesday, it starts on the 12th noon, but Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that is 28, 29, and 30th, is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We will feed them, but you need to accommodate them and transport them. As many of us as are here, the Lord ordered your footsteps to be a part of what he is doing in the nations. Please answer the call and partner with him. Thank you and God bless you. I'll be calling on, sir, okay, for the closing prayers. 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be God forevermore. Once more, thank you very much for being for us at, at uh, Truth Institute. This is not an ordinary gathering. Uh, the crowd may not, I don't think there was a big crowd the day that Paul and uh, Barnabas were sent to the nations. Uh, it was that church in Antioch. And we want to praise the Lord for the consequences. And we have great expectations concerning, concerning you. Please, if you are one of our so deep people from Lagos, I would like to see you very briefly. Don't go away without seeing me. I want to see all of you briefly together. Just a quick word and then you can be on your way. Secondly, we would like another photograph with the class because our chairman was not here and then some of our faculty members. So we would like um, if some of the people can help us quickly uh, as soon as we sing the closing hymn, as soon as we sing the closing hymn, uh, you come, wipe your face so that we can take uh, another photograph that has our chairman. Uh, praise the Lord. Glory to the name of Jesus. Thank you. We would like to express our gratitude to the hospital chapel. For the last several years, this church, which is, by the way, our home church, has granted us the use of this auditorium, and we want to express our gratitude to the leaders. We'll be doing that formally, but we want... Uh, it to be on record that we are grateful and we pray that God's presence and power will continue to manifest here in Jesus' name. Remember, you can enroll in the School of Divine Priorities. Uh, you can be trained. You just heard about equipping. Equip yourself because God wants to send you to the nations. So collect the form. Uh, there's the table on this side. If you pass by that place, you can get a form. Or you can get the link where you can fill the form online. And finally, at Eternity Ministries, we are not a church. We don't have Sunday services. And I am not a church pastor. But we have partners, people that believe in the work and they give towards it. And so we want to encourage you, if you would like to partner with us and the ministry, um, I think there is also, the forms are there, right? Huh? Please, or can you just quickly put up your hand if you want to partner with the ministry? Quickly, get some ushers so that you can pass that out. Anybody like that, you want to know more about how to partner with the work? Okay, I don't see any hands up now, but you can always pass by that place and uh, provide some information. They will also provide account information so that if you want to give, um, you'll be able to do so. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Okay, let's stand and sing our hymn. Uh, and then we share the grace and we are out of here. Sister Tosi and uh, Jerry, can you help us? Our closing hymn as, is at the... That's on page 9. If you have page 9, it's send the light. Hallelujah. Send the light. So let's sing that and then... I will pronounce a benediction and then we are we are done. Thank you. Send the 
light And the grateful offering of the cross We lay Send the light Send the light Send the light Oh, bless the gospel light Let it shine From shore to shore Send the light Be everywhere about Send the light Send the light And the great by spirit everywhere Send the light Send the light Send the light Gospel light Let it shine From shore to shore For our crowns above, send the light, send the Clap of in hallelujah. Send the light, send the light. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lift up the light of his countenance upon you. Give you his peace. In the time of scarcity, cause you to be satisfied. Open to you his good treasure. Give you wisdom for uncommon solutions. Open your eye to see opportunities. May the favor of the Almighty God rest on you. May the Lord personally supervise all that concerns you. You will never be stranded in life. I said you will never be stranded in life. Help will arise for you at every juncture. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Eternal Father, these men and women, boys and girls, several, they have stayed in your presence today. Now, as we go forth from this place, you send us forth with your blessing. You send us forth with your grace. Blessed be your name, Father, forever. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And all of God's people shouted, Amen. Okay, let's share the grace together. And as we are doing that, please quickly bring the chairs. Class, come back. All our faculty and our chairman, please come. Let's share the grace together. And all of our Sunday brethren from Lagos, don't forget. I need to see you just briefly, personally, and then uh, you can go and do other things. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.